Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. We got a great episode today. We're going to be talking about the first Catholic saint. Yeah, this is the very first saint in Catholicism, and one you probably don't even remember his name. So hold your horses, because we're about to tell you who that saint is in just a second. You got me on the edge of my seat. I know, Rich. Wow, that was like, oh like so my gosh. good. Now, this is going to be a really awesome episode. This I'm is pumped. A, you know, the first saint in heaven. Can you just imagine that? This, I talk about this all the time, yeah. and I always ask people, who do you think is the first saint in heaven? And many people raise their hand, you know, Blessed Mother, you know, Peter, uh, St. Peter, yeah. you know, all these different names that, that are thrown out there, and most people don't know who that first saint is. And who is that first saint, Padre? Saint Dismas. Amen. Amen. Saint Dismas is a remarkable saint with such deep, rich meaning behind his story, and so important to all of us, and one of the patrons of our talk show. So, you know, there's very rarely anybody talking about him, but this is, you know, when you consider the places that he was at, crucified next to Christ, the first saint in heaven. I mean, this is a saint that needs a lot more understanding, a lot more veneration. And that's what we're going to hope to do today yeah. is really let you know about this powerful, amazing saint. An another thing, too, is it, g it gives you a glimpse into who your God is. And spiritually, we can draw so much from this, this event that that's occurred right. before Jesus breathed his last. Amen mm -hmm. to that. So starting out with the event itself, let's open up to Luke chapter 23, 43. This is very easy to remember and memorize. 23, 43 from the gospel of Luke. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him said in reply, have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Every time I read that scripture, it just touches my heart, man. It's, yeah. it's so moving. What do we know about Dismas before he was on the cross? You know surprisingly a lot and surprisingly nothing, right? So everything that we know about Dismas, St. Dismas before Good Friday, is really golden legend, right? Okay. So one of the golden legends, and I think this comes from one of the Syriac infancy gospels, right? When the Syriac or Arabic infancy narratives, that St. Dismas was the name of the good thief. Well, the the unrepentant thief, his name is Justus, okay? And according to this tradition, on the flight to Egypt, when Mary, Jesus, and Joseph were going to Egypt to uh, avoid Herod, as they were going through the desert to get there, back in those days, the roads were very dangerous because there's no policing. And if you were on your on the road, that's where you, you know, you'd run into bandits, right? That was a very common thing. And according to, to tradition... Um, when the Holy Family was going to Egypt, they were actually accosted by Justice and Dismas. And Justice says, okay, look at this family. Wow, they what is that? And they see these riches, which is probably the gifts of the Magi. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we're going to go rob these people and kill them. And Dismas, for some reason, was moved by the sight of the Christ child and convinced Justice not to, and even went so far as to host them and give them food and provisions for along the way. And then Mary told him that you will be blessed one day for this. One day you will receive a great blessing for how you've treated us. And according to, to tradition, Dismas always carried that with him and always expected that to happen. He always had that seed of faith in him. Now, that's, that's one of the... That's a, that's a beautiful story. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard that before. Yeah. Did you hear that before, Della no. Yeah. So yeah, that's where does that come from? That's it's from one of the infancy narratives. They're, you know, tradition, apocryphal. Mm -hmm. 
probably likely not true, but maybe, right? That, these are the traditions of the earliest Christians. It's a writing yeah. that was most likely learned through the apostolic tradition or, mm-hmm. you know, on an account from either Mary or Joseph or mm-hmm. whoever, you know? Now, Dismas's name uh, comes from the Greek word for sunset. That's where the name comes from. So sunset, to consider that Jesus was crucified at noon and then until three o'clock when he gave up his spirit in the eclipse of the sun and to realize that, you know, the sun setting, you know, in, in a sense, the son of justice has arisen and the incarnation, the sun is setting in his death and darkness filled the earth and the earth quaked. And, you know, at the death of Dismas, Dismas is a product of what Jesus accomplishes in the setting sun in his death by arising him to new life, the new dawn, the new day, if you will, in his resurrection. Today you will be with me in paradise. This is the promise realized in the setting sun. And how appropriate is that, that the name Dismas mm-hmm. relates to that? It's it's kind of powerful. Now, something else along with that is that um, if you've ever looked at a crucifix, every crucifix you will ever see, Christ's head is inclined towards the right. And do you know why that is? That's where Dismas was. That's where Dismas was. You look at any crucifix and Christ's head is tilted towards Dismas so that even in his moment of passion, our Lord was compassionately oriented towards a sinner dying next to him in complete disgrace. Just that little fine nuance of the crucifix has such a profound meaning for me. And I'll never look at the crucifix again after having learned that in the same way. It's that disposition and that reception of what God is doing in Jesus in, on the cross. And when I, after I read the gospel passage, I looked over at Delacrosse and your eyes, your eyes were welled up and, and, you know, felt the spirit of that. And you mentioned before, you know, like this is important to realize about, you know, mercy and, and yeah. Jesus and, you know. Well, the saints are... Um, often upheld as uh, holier than thou, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, you know, hey, we just pray to this saint. We just, you know, whatever. Um, And that's just not the case. I mean, our faith is not one that's born out of righteousness. It's born out of poverty, Mm -hmm. right? The poverty of the soul. And, And God's, and even in Paul, Paul's, one of Paul's letter, he says, in my weakness is where I am strong. Right, and so I can't imagine a more weaker state for a human being mm. than to be crucified. And we always look at God just like justice. Is it just justice? justice. G E S T A. Justice, right? Yeah. Justice. What did justice say? If you're the son of God, you'd be able to get out of this situation. Mm-hmm. And how often do we pray to God? God, just get me out of this situation. God, if you're this God, then take me from this mm. pain and suffering out of it into where I'm not in pain and suffering. And the reality is, is that God wants to use our suffering. He wants to meet us in our suffering to create this bond with us to make us stronger. And not only that, but also to save our souls. So just spiritually, what is gained from this story is that God's mercy is never ending. The recognition that Dismas had, that this was the Savior, because he was forgiving the people that were mocking him, mm. you know, prior to, you know, his recognition of this. That, that alone was enough for God to extend his mercy. He knew who he was in his heart, mm-hmm. and Jesus saw that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't, like, it's, 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 there's so much hope in this story for you all know, of us that yeah. we, we, all, we all suffer, we all sin, that God is extending his mercy constantly to us, even to the end, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one of those cases of baptism by desire, right? That's a good point. Yeah. How was St. Dismas the first saint? You know, he wasn't baptized, right? And this is a stumbling block for me. He wasn't baptized. Well, you know, this is what the church teaches is a baptism by desire. He desired it with all of his heart in recognizing the Savior and saying, Lord, take me into your kingdom. He now, probably didn't even know what a baptism was. Right. But, you know, there is also the tradition that when um, Jesus was lanced, that the water, part of the, the blood in the water that mm. flew from his side, uh, also from that water did have that element of baptismal, wow. you know, so he was baptized, baptized in the blood and water of Christ, wow. right? Mm-hmm. Which I think is 
Um, another first. Yeah, another first, right? <laughs> mm. The only problem with that would be, you know, that that uh, theology instructs that baptism has to happen for the living. Mm -hmm. And he would have already died at the point where Jesus was lanced because their legs were broken. And well, the gotcha. breaking your legs only accelerates death. Because it doesn't of kill suffocating. You. It, do, it doesn't kill you instantly. Yeah, but but I was always under the impression that they had already they had already perished at the point where Jesus was lanced. I I don't but, know. I don't know that to be the case one way or the other. Yeah, and it's probably not defined. Yeah. But um, but I think that's an important point as it relates to baptism and how awesome would it be that blood and water yeah. came forth from his heart. And dis in Dismas's dying breath to receive baptism, like it's not beyond the grace of God. All yeah. the more, mm -hmm. you know, all the more. And then, and then, you know, as blood and water flowed forth from the side of Christ, the birth of the church occurred in the birth of the sacraments, and it's being realized in its first fruit. <laughs> so he was the first. Baptized person. That's in, that's. I've never, that, Nacho Libre I've would never love that. <laughs> ever thought about that until right now. But it's 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 interesting to to think about that. Yeah. So what got Saint Dismas up onto that cross? What was he guilty of? What was he convicted of? Why was Saint Dismas being crucified? Right now, there's not anything really clear. They didn't say you know he did X or or Y. Uh, but they didn't have the busted magazine either. They didn't have busted magazine. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what busted magazine, it's a magazine that shows everyone who got arrested and for what. But um, <laughs> the Greek scriptures uses the same word for Barabbas as it does for the criminals crucified next to Christ. Okay. Um, and we know Barabbas was essentially like an insurrectionist, right? But he was also a murderer. A murderer yeah. and an insurrectionist, but they use the same word to describe justice and dismiss. So we know, but they're called the good thieves. So it's likely, again, that they were at least violent thieves because you wouldn't have gotten the capital, most grotesque uh, punishment of, of crucifixion unless you really warranted it under the Roman system, unless it was like mass insurrection and just everyone's crucified, like with the, you know, gladiator revolt. Mm -hmm. But likely he was a, a highwayman, right? A violent highwayman or an insurrection or maybe both, right? And that plays into that story of him coming upon the Holy Family on their flight to Egypt that he hid out in the desert and waited for caravans or Romans or troops or, or you know, anything to go by and was killing people and stealing stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's likely, according to, you know, Scripture and trying to read into a little bit more, he was either a criminal, a violent criminal, an insurrectionist, or both. And I think it's important to realize that, you know, indeed we have been condemned justly for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crime. So whatever whatever that was written in the law, I mean, it, it corresponds to, to the crime. So we right. know within a certain parameter of, yeah. of what the legal system was at that time, mm -hmm. he, he must have been a convict of that yeah. particular infraction. And... And, you know, just to, to hear that, you know, we, you know, have you no fear of God for you are subject to the same condemnation. And he's talking to the unrepentant yeah. sinner, the unrepentant thief or the unrepentant revolutionary, you know. So what you're what you're seeing is an act of penitence, an act of repentance uh, in respect to dismiss. Right. You know, recognizing like this is what and I've you, done. You can't help but to wonder um, where in this scene, right? Where in this sacrifice that Jesus was making, where in the conversations that were going on, where did he finally realize through this grace, like that he was being crucified next to him? Because, you know, you saw him forgiving people who were mocking him. You saw, I mean, he walked up with him, I'm sure, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they were probably I'm sure they in the same yeah. caravan. So at what point was this, manifest to mm -hmm. him. You know, you just can't help but to wonder. Yeah. Well, tradition says that he experienced, well, they say the, the people being crucified with him were mocking him as well. And they say that, according to tradition, that when Dismas had his conversion was when the shadow of Christ fell on him. So that also gives that sense of 
the sunset, the darkness coming, right? Mm. That, according to tradition, was the moment where he both recognized this is that moment that that woman in the desert so long ago promised me that I would have this great grace in my life. Mm. He recognized that in the darkness that, he, you know, according to his name, that the sun was setting. And then in that, in his own darkness, in the reality of a situation, but in the physical darkness of the shadow of the cross is when he understood this to be the Messiah in opposition to justice. Hmm. And another thing that I think's always been so interesting is comparing the unrepentant thief and the repentant thief yeah. and what they were asking for. Yep. Dismas, the repentant thief, did not ask to be taken down from the cross. Justice was like, if you are the son of God, take us down. Dismas said, take me up with you to your kingdom. So when you're on the cross, there's two natural reactions or there's two directions you go down or up. And it's so interesting that he did not ask to be taken down. He asked to be taken up. And that's why he is that first saint, as opposed to justice, who is remembered as the unrepentant sinner who, who knows what happened to him. Right. Yeah. And salvation uh, obviously comes through s suffering, right? right? Like, you know, that's why we make sacrifices during Lent. Right, that's why we turn our hearts, you know, towards God through suffering. Suffering has a value for the kingdom of God. It has a value in prayer to to dispense the Holy Spirit through however God chooses to, but but God recognizes that suffering, and so you know we live in a world where suffering is is at all costs. Tr you know, you try to move away from it, where the. Um, Jesus embracing this suffering and, and the recognition of the king, like you said, went two different ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The disposition of, you know, justice in this sense is always taking, mm -hmm. you know, and what you hear is, uh, you know, in respect to Dismas is, you know, petitioning to receive. Yeah. And, you know, what a distinction to be made in, in respect to our own journey. Like we always want to petition in order to receive something that, you know, is outside of our power to, to obtain, you know, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to mercy, it's received when it comes to the prodigal son returning to the father, you know, the, he's petitioning mm -hmm. the father for mercy. Um, the beautiful thing about the prodigal son is that, you know, he, the father, you know, the merciful father extends his mercy before his son even goes into his prepared speech you know, that, that Jesus's mercy extends to dismiss in that same uh, disposition of the father. He's the manifestation of the father and he's embracing dismiss in this sense, drawing him into paradise, not because of anything other than the fact that dismiss is petitioning in a spirit of penitence. Yeah. I, I'll never forget this. It's, it happened probably about 15 20 years ago, there was a priest I know. His name is Father Dan DeVore. Shout out to him. He's in South Florida. He sends me a, a book every, you know, Christmas. Um, he was like visibly shaken uh, in a group that we were in. And I'm like, I walked up to him. I was like, how you doing, man? You don't look very well. And he's like, I just experienced something that, you know, I've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm just, just taking it all in. And I'm like, you want to talk about it? He went to the hospital on a call and this guy had been away from the church for 50 years, right? I mean, 60 years. The guy was like 88 years old. Mm -hmm. Called for a priest, and he said, I gave him uh, confession, Holy Eucharist, and the right of the sick. And he goes, and, and, I've, and like, I've never experienced this, the, the power that was in that room. And, and I was like, well, you know, what, what did it feel like? And he says, it just felt like God was reaching down and taking him to heaven mm. and saving him. Right. Wow. Like I was just like, and as he was saying it, his mm -hmm. tears were in his eyes. And I was mm. like, sounds a lot like St. Dismas, mm -hmm. you know? And he, this priest, Father Dan DeVore is, is, you know, a, a veteran, you know, yep. he has been a priest for, you know, 40 plus yeah. years, 50 yeah. years. Um, and to, to have that, yeah, that's right. you know, him, yeah. yeah, to have that experience of, you know, pastoral care. I never heard that story until yeah. right now. Um, to have that experience in pastoral care at that time, I mean, what a gift from God. It just shook me too, mm -hmm. because, you know, you see God acting and you try to understand who God is because mm -hmm. it 
draws your heart to prayer. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we see Jesus interacting with the apostles, the patience that he showed them, and even the love that he shows them for, you know, turning away from him. And then you look at, you know, it's it's like the, the guy that's making the money and and then the other people come late to do the work and they get paid the same amount. We're all getting paid the same amount if we, you know, by God's grace, get go, go to heaven, right? And so, you know, the the brother of the prodigal <laughs> son being upset. That, right. Yeah. Right. It's like, I've been doing all this work. I've been struggling. And it's there like, is no labor equivalent to the gift of eternal life in paradise. But it's the short-sightedness it is so in short-sighted. our human state. Yeah. Right. It's our fragility where we don't mm-hmm. see things as God sees things. Mm-hmm. But God teaches us these things. Hopefully through grace and prayer, we, we come to understand them, that it's this is all about getting to heaven. This whole existence that we're in is literally about receiving God's mercy and going to heaven, uniting ourselves to him and going to heaven. And so you see this as like this great victory for our own souls, right? Mm-hmm. Dismas is a great, it should be praised as a great victory for us all. I love yes. that. That's Excellent. Dismas is a great victory. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's a victory for our sinfulness. It's a victory for, you know, all the, the things that the accuser tells us, right? Mm-hmm. We're not good enough. You know, you've done this bad thing. You can't serve God. You can't even serve your family because you're just a goofball, right? Like all these things that that the accuser like provides for us in our lifetime mm-hmm. about how we're not, you know, worthy. Right here, you're seeing the worthiness that we have in a, a very sinful man who's literally dying mm. and is so near his last breath that Jesus recognizes his, you know, uh, his recognition of him and says, come on, let's go. Yeah. And to, t- and to tie that to what Sheil was saying before at sunset, that this is precisely at that what, late hour, that late hour, then dismiss <laughs> has this conversion moment of seeing the shadow cast. And he is seeing the light behind Christ, essentially shining. And then it's a recognition. He sees the light literally, and then he repents, and then he, with contrition, yeah. you know, offers his petition, that, and then that it's met by mercy. That's just yeah. beautiful. This is all, like, packed in yeah. right there, last breath. What a visual. What a you visual. Know? Last breath, his name meaning sunset. I have goosebumps. Right? Yeah. yeah. What a visual. You can envision that happening. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, and then, you know, as the sun... And he's being lanced, and his legs have been broken, and he's gasping for his his last breath. Every ounce of energy that he has left, he recognizes it at that moment. Right. And we get like, and, and this is a lot of what our show's about. You know, we we are we as a show, we try to gaze towards heaven. We try to gaze towards our Lord. We try to soak ourselves in all of what our faith is. Right. So that, you know, we were walking, we're being fed along the journey. Right. So that's what we're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are people out there suffering that are in sin that are, you know, and, and, you know, when they, when they finally have their conversion, whether it's the last breath or before, like God's still extending mercy to him, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we get kind of caught up in our day to day and like the things that we have and the, the status that we are here and, all of that is just, a, it's just flushed out of our mm-hmm. system when we die. It's mm-hmm. all gone, every yeah. bit of it. And Dismas was stripped of that before. Yeah. I mean, he was being brutally tortured, tortured naked, and there's no hope. Mm-hmm. There's no hope. And Justice is mocking, get us down from here, because he's resigned to that death and that, and mm-hmm. he's wallowing in it. And Dismas, you know, even in that moment, naked, crucified, bleeding to death, can't breathe, suffering. I mean, just even considering that, you know, how many saints have said, oh, you know, they've, they got the stigmata, right? Oh. You know, St. Francis or Padre Pio, they have the stigmata and they, they experience the, oh, the yeah. Calvary. Who experienced the stigmata more than Dismas? Yeah. I mean, maybe even in a, in a mystical way, Dismas was experienced both physical crucifixion and stigmata at the same time. And if you think about it, Christ comes to us in grace, right, and through the gift of faith, and and we experience an encounter with him and and turn in, in contrition and then, you know, go to confession or, you know, we're sorry for our sins, and we experience God's mercy. 
he was actually participating in the actual sacrifice, mm. the actual debt that was being paid for the sin of all humanity. He was right there, woven into it. Mm. He was the first beneficiary. Mm. You know? <laughs> I mean, probably in proximity, he was closer to Jesus than Mary was, and Mary was at the foot of the cross. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, he was, yeah, you know, right there at the same level. I mean, yeah. You know, everyone says, well, you know, unite your suffering to the cross, you know, take it to Calvary, right? I don't know if anyone's ever united the suffering in the same way as St. Dismas. Mm-mm. That's what I was saying. Be- because the immediate proximity right. to Jesus. And experiencing it physically f- firsthand. Well, and, and, you know, whether it's Peter or Andrew or any of the other brothers that were crucified or, sure. you know, people, right. how many Franciscans were crucified in, in, in Japan you know, and in Japan and all these other... But you know the point is, is that Jesuits in Japan. Sorry. the The point is, is that um, it, the the Italian in Italy, they uh, the Franciscans were crucified. Mm-hmm. Um, but to realize that it's throughout not to take time, away from that. yeah, not to take away from that, right. but throughout time, you have all of these different uh, facets of suffering for the name of Christ, or suffering with Christ, or pairing your suffering with Christ. But Dismas, on a proximity level, as first saint. Amazing. Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about Dismas. But before we do that, why don't you tell everyone how they can find out more about us? I'd be happy to. So if you want to get in touch with us, be sure to go to our social media channels on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Catholic Talk Show. Also, if you want to learn more about how you could listen in or view our content, check out CatholicTalkShow.com. There you'll see every way to listen in on your commute to work. Or if you want to view our content, we're on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube right now, make sure that you click the subscribe button Click the little bell bell next to it, and then any show that we ever produce, it will populate in your feed, and you won't miss any content from the Catholic Talk Show. We want to give a big shout out to our patrons. The show would not be able to be produced without your generosity. If you're considering becoming a financial contributor to the show, go to patreon.com forward slash Catholic Talk Show. There you'll see every way that you could support the show, and we have some cool materials and, and memorabilia for you. We even have a tier where you can get a St. Dismas medal because St. Dismas is, you know, one of the patrons of our shows because we're just a band of good thieves, you know, trying to do our best to follow Christ to the cross. Crying out to the Lord for his mercy each and every day. So St. Dismas, okay, so say someone listens to this episode and they develop a devotion to him. Well, what feast day would they celebrate? What is St. Dismas's feast day? Can either of you guys guess? Probably what a memorial or something like that. Like, well, it's what actually, it, it's I believe it's tied to the Annunciation because You're there's right. a, yeah there's a tradition in in respect to Dismas as it relates to Christ when he was actually uh, crucified and when the, the conception took place yes. the birth. So the Annunciation is actually nine months. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, the uh, uh, nine months to Christmas to Christmas to yeah. Christmas, right? Well. The tradition was that Christ and that all great people you know, at the time uh, were, they would die on the day they were conceived. And it lines up with, you know, the 14th of Nisan and all of that, that the first Easter would have been March 25th, which is the Annunciation. Easter still will fall on March 25th. But because of that, St. Dismas's feast day is March 25th on the Annunciation and sometimes on Easter. Mm-hmm. Now, you can always remember him every Easter. It's almost like a movable feast, right? Yeah. But his official feast day is March 25th for that reason. Mm-hmm. What a, and that's even a beautiful tie. There's so much more. Like you were saying, there's not a lot known about Dismas, but there really is. And it's, and it's cloaked in the mystery of Jesus's mercy and in his own personhood that, that God manifested his mercy through Dismas as a victory that you were saying before. Now, yeah. now we don't, at least according to what I could find, we don't have any relics of St. Dismas because... Typically, criminals uh, who are crucified were thrown into Gehenna, right? That Christ is always, you know, warning about Gehenna. Well, Gehenna was a garbage dump that was always kept on fire where all the garbage and all the criminals' bodies were thrown in, right? So he would have been disposed unceremoniously because he would not have had a Joseph of Arimathea to come and get him. I would have to confirm that with you because I believe my pastor says he has a relic of St. Dismas under our altar. Possibly, like I said, I could yeah. be wrong, but what we do have is a relic of Saint Dismas's cross. Now that might be the relic that, that he be. has, okay? Because when Saint Helena discovered the true cross, she found three crosses, right? And she didn't know 
which one was the actual cross. So she was taking sick people from Jerusalem and having them lay down on the cross. And the ones that were healed was coming all from the one cross. So that's how they confirmed this is the true cross. Mm. But people would have a violent reaction to the cross of justice, but they would have a neutral or positive reaction to the other one. So they were able to, St. Helena was able to determine the true cross and Dismas's cross. So we wow. do have relics mm. of the cross St. Dismas was crucified on. So that would likely Mind. be the relic. Mm. Um, but because of all these, so his, he's the patron saint of the dying. He's the patron saint of prisoners too. And I think a lot of prison ministries are named after St. Dismas, right? A lot of um, mm -hmm. prison chapels would be named after St. Dismas. And there's actually a church in New York, and it's a really unique church. It's in uh, Danamora, New York. Like, there was like a big escape from that a few years ago. Like, Lucky Luciano was there in the 30s, right? And it is the Church of St. Dismas. It is the only freestanding Catholic church inside of a prison in the entire United States. Hmm. And the prisoners are able to get out of, you know, yeah. cell block, and they can actually go to church in a prison, in a freestanding prison. And it's named after St. Dismas. And it's a really cool church. That you should, you know, look into that one in Danmore, New York. In Danmore, uh, it's in Clinton, New York, uh, correctional facility. Huh. There's a, a movie that ju that just comes out that came out in 2020 on December 22nd, and it's the Penitent Thief, mm -hmm. and it's the story of the two unnamed men who were crucified with Jesus. But this is the name of of uh, that man, mm -hmm. you know. And there was another movie that was like way back, uh, you know, that I watched with my grandfather in black and white on a uh, prison, like a prison ministry as it relates to sharing the story of Saint Dismas. Uh, that's actually where I first encountered, you know, the incredible story of of, uh, of Dismas. Yeah, prison ministry, very important for everyone who does it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a ministry that can really change your lives and the lives of people who are normally, you know, just cast off as, again, like Ryan, you were saying, people like, oh, you sinned, so you have no value anymore. But actually, they could be, you know, St. Dismas was the first saint, and there's these people in prison who have all the capacity to hear that call of mercy and be saints, too, so... You know, consider prison ministry if you can. Mm -hmm. Now, the, what you also said is he's the patron of uh, patron saint of dying, yes. people dying. And um, I have the funeral ritual here. And I just wanted to, you know, express one of the prayers that always stands out to me, uh, which is one of the options of commendation, the prayer of commendation. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of our brother or our sister, uh, John or Susan, your servant, in the sight of this world, he or she is now dead. In your sight, may he or she live forever. Forgive whatever sins he or she has committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant them everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the reason I like that, and there's also, um, you know, prefaces associated with calling to mind the sins of the particular person we are celebrating the funeral ritual for, and it's done so in the same line of, of how important, uh, you know, the, the recognition of your sins before the righteousness of God and the mercy of Jesus, the most important thing is that we're recognizing and confessing, petitioning Jesus for mercy. Awesome. So again, you know, St. Dismas, you know, a patron of ours, a saint that I have a great devotion to, I think, you know, there's so much to learn and consider. Like, like we've said, almost nothing is known about him, but so much is right there to learn if you just, you know, really meditate on who St. Dismas was. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get out of here, I want to do two things. Padre, why don't you tell everyone about our sponsor, and then we got a special surprise for you. Okay. Our sponsor, Hallo, is the number one Catholic app in the App Store to date. And let me tell you, it is a magnificent app. Over 400 million prayers have been said through this app. There are contemplative prayers, Lexio Divina, Bible in the Year with Father Mike Schmitz. There's so many resources on this app, and it continues to grow. People's lives have been changed by building a habit of prayer through this wonderful technique and this wonderful application. So make sure you check out Hallow Today. And as you do, realize that there are so many functions of this app, developing your own personal prayer, 
developing prayer, even in groups, journaling, and maintaining the consistency of prayer that sometimes we could slip out of in the busyness of life. So check out Hallow. I am sure that it will enrich your spiritual journey with Christ. All right. Thank you for that. And thank you to our sponsors. We really appreciate it. Are you helping us along with our patrons uh, produce the show. Now, before we go, okay, we have an inquisition. Oh, Lordy. I, I brought one in my pocket. Ryan's, really? Ryan's got this and Ryan is way more brutal than me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. This, is, this one's actually pretty fun to think about. Again, this great mystery of Dismas and the first saint. Um, so, so, Jesus dies on the cross. Dismas is brought into the kingdom. Okay? That's day. That mm-hmm. day. Today. I brought you in. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, we all know <laughs> Jesus Why got... are you yelling at me? Hey. Hey. <laughs> we all know Jesus got buried, <laughs> and then he rose from the dead. Mm-hmm. And so uh, where was Dismas between all that? <laughs> so Jesus came back for 40 days. He also came back for 40 days. And well, he wasn't in heaven or something. So, so was Dismas just like kicking it with the father for a little while? So it's like, do you like hang out at the house? I'll be back in 40 days. Is that, is that what you're thinking? <laughs> or like, hey man, listen, I'm gonna let you in, but I gotta go down to hell and save all them souls, man. I'll be right back. <laughs> So technically, Jesus has to go to heaven before he does. So there's mm-hmm. got to be. So he, he just like, hey, he just like leapfrog over Jesus into the heaven. He's the one who breaks open the seal. He's the one that he's the one that opens the gates of heaven. Um, so, I, you know, I'm no authority on the subject. <laughs> you know, you know Father I wasn't Mike there I, and I am no Father Mike Schmidt. <laughs> I, I wasn't there. But my my take on you know, the eighth day or eternity, it, it, you know, it's, it's the sense of entering in to the permanent today. Like today you will be with me in paradise. It's in the sense of, of eternity. Um, so what that paradise looks like, um, what the coming kingdom will look like when Jesus comes back to judge the living and the dead, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth, all of these things we anticipate is anticipating that eternal now, that eternal day in communion with Christ. So what we see in Dismas in the moment of repentance and his death is perfect communion with Jesus. And that is precisely what paradise is. That is what is the day, the eighth day, as, as we call it. That's what we celebrate in relationship to Sunday. It's Sunday, you know, secularly is the beginning of a new week. Saturday is the Shabbat Shalom, like the Sabbath, right? So we enter into rest on the Sabbath. Well, why do we observe the eighth day? Why do we observe Sunday? Because that's the day of the resurrection. This is the this is the revelation of Jesus risen from the tomb. That is the day that Dismas is enjoying permanently in relationship with Jesus Christ. The resurrection. Today you will be with me. He is enjoying that action of God's mercy. Enjoying the resurrection before the resurrection. Absolutely. Okay. And then also a couch in the house. I was with, about to you say, know. now we know there's a house in heaven. <laughs> so did he get to pick a room? <laughs> Shotgun, you know. So, <laughs> While Jesus was down on earth doing his thing yeah, for 40 yeah, days, yeah. he's like going through all, oh, this room looks good. He's <laughs> yeah, the first yeah, yeah. saint. Eating Jesus's peanuts and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like you do it. <laughs> no, you know, pistachios. Uh, That's what he pistach- eats. He eats my pistachios. Greek iconography, when they're showing the herring of how we'll often show Disney with Jesus, mm. right? Mm. So he would have accompanied them with that. And then also, you know, Jesus is breaking the limbo patrum, right? He is breaking the limbo of the, of the Old Testament fathers, right? And they would have went in there. So likely, if we're being, I don't know, technical, Jesus would have been alone. He would have been there with like, you know, Joshua and Moses and stuff. So it's like going to a party with a bunch of people you don't know, like. Oh, this is his friends from that side. Oh, well, so he's kind of like he's saying like the one guy from the east side. Like, and dude, and we are just bastardizing heaven. Think right about now. think <laughs> about though. Like th- that's an incredible thought that dismiss with Jesus. Talk about victory. Now he witnesses the victory. He's that pr- most proximate witness of the victory of what ac- was accomplished by Jesus on the cross in his death and now rising. In that sense, yeah. into that eternal today, 
the eighth day, which is which is incredible. Oh. Now, before we let you go, I want to give you a, a, a recommendation of that second movie that I mentioned. It's called The Hoodlum Priest. My grandfather introduced me to it. It's a 1961 film by Kirshner, and it's the life of Father Charles Dismas Clark, uh, who ministered to men in prison, and it's well worth a watch. So check out The Hoodlum Priest today. And we also want to say, make sure, once again, before you leave this YouTube video, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, click the bell, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Mm -hmm.